Hong Kong Direct is your weekly racing roundup full of news, views, previews, interviews and special guests. And on today's show, we're dedicating it to the 50th anniversary of the Apprentice Jockey School here at the Hong Kong Jockey Club. We're hearing from Felix Kutsi very shortly, who's the chief riding instructor. First up, they'll take a look behind the scenes at the school and hear from two graduates for which it was a life-changing experience. My father and my uncle was a jockey, meant to be jockey in India. I remember all my life I've, I've been with horses. It all began 50 years ago in this apprentice jockey school. <laughs> That's where I built my career in my life as a jockey and now as a trainer too. AJS was a platform of the career, the foundation of where we started from. When they've given me the chance to join the school. Chadwick shoots him away at the 150 from Dan Excel, Geoffrey storming home, but California memory makes it back-to-back -back cup victories and goes into the history books for same. They gave me the opportunity to come into racing, find something that I love doing, and uh, it's been life-changing, it's been career-changing, because that had set me on the path of my career. Nowadays, I'm sure the AJS got the best platform for young kids that can go and learn, you know? Yeah. With all the experiences the Joy Club have to improve yourself in a much better condition. And that full documentary as well, you'll see live on the website hkjc.com from Sunday, I believe. Love looking back at those, uh, those old pictures and uh, Tony Cruz jumping up on the mechanical horse as well. It was pretty fantastic. I'm pleased to say now we're joined um, on the line by uh, Chief Riding Instructor for the, uh, the Apprentice Jockey School as well. Now it's uh, Felix Kutsi. Felix, uh, thanks for joining us. This is a, a big moment for the school, 50 years and counting. Yes, indeed, Andrew. Um, it's been a very auspicious occasion and um, quite a lot of work went into those videos and so on that you've seen. Now, Tony Cruz, incredibly, was part of that very first um, induction into the, um, into the school 50 years ago. Ricky Yu was there as well, and I heard um, Tony speaking about um, it was a Yorkshire military man that used to run it back in those days, uh, Major Anthony Grimshaw. I'm assuming it was a little bit different uh, back then, or do you, do you rule with the iron glove as well? <laughs> No, we can't do that these days, Andrew. <laughs> Things have changed, as you say. <laughs> but uh, still, um, under Amy Chan, it's, it's um, a very comprehensive and a very thorough program. And uh, I, I think we put a lot into it. So just give us an, an overview of um, how your working week is basically, you're, you're with all these uh, the apprentices in the classroom and, and out on the horses as well? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, if you if you take a day like today, I mean, we we started off uh, at about four fifteen. We were feeding the horses. There are a couple of the newer trainees, and we'll go and feed the horses in the morning, um, because just to get their, their their first feed in before they go to track work. And then we'll take some horses out to the track. Um, we follow them. We follow the new ones along behind them on their way to the track. As you know, we're, we're stabled at the Olympic stables, uh, which gives us a nice trot up and warm up before they go to work. Uh, and then we watch them, I'll watch them on the track. You know, th there's that element of horsemanship that I'm trying to uh, instill in these riders and to get them to be able to feel that horse and affect the, the, the relaxation into that horse is very, very important. And then once once that's all done, uh, they go back to the stables and they, they start, you know, they'll be rolling the horses and washing them and cleaning them and uh, feeding and so on. So that's the stable work that's done. Um, and after that, that, that takes us through to about 10, 10.30. Um, and, and then they'll cycle back to the, to the school, um, have breakfast, and if we're doing fitness and they won't shower, because sometimes we'll do our fitness program in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, just depending on, on our schedule for the day. Otherwise, we'll do the, the video review of the morning. So all our, all our track work is videoed and we can go and uh, you know tell them the things or 
discuss the things that we, they've done well or things that need improvement. I was going to say, we, we saw Tony Cruz um, on the mechanical horse in that little uh, short video before. So is that something, do you, not only Tony, but do you get some of the other the, the riders, the, you know, Matthew Charrick, Derek Long, Vincent, do all those sort of guys come back and, and, and speak with the apprentices? an ongoing process with the, the previous um, you know, graduates? Absolutely, absolutely. It was great to have Tony there that day. And, and Tony loves to help. Um, anything that he can do, you know, that, that sort of advice. And to get him up there on the horse, uh, holding the reins and so on, it was just terrific. But over the years, we've had Zach, we've had Joe, we've had Vincent Ho, we've had Matthew Poon. Oh, we've had uh, virtually everybody. And just the other day, we had a massive one with, with Douglas. And um, he, he, he came over and we actually Zoomed in everybody in China and, and from Australia as well. So those, those apprentices in, tra in, in, in Australia were watching as well. So that was a great one. You, you mentioned Australia there. Um, seem to be using Australia pro predominantly for the apprentices to go out and get some experience. Who have we got riding in Australia at, uh, at the moment? There's um, three or four jockeys over there, is there? Yes, there are. There's uh, the, the most prolific one is Angus Chung. Uh, he's doing very nice. He's had 75 winners there. Um, he's, he's a nice chap. He's, uh, he, he's bright and he thinks his way through a race well. Um, he likes to follow the right horses. He's very uh, alert to what's going on around him. And um, he, he rides a nice, nice clean race too. Um, there's also Ellis Wong. Uh, he's he's a very uh, uh, hungry guy, hungry to win, <laughs> and um, he's he's doing okay. He's just come back from suspension, so he's a he's a work in progress at the moment. Then we've got a girl called Nicola Ewan. Nicola started off and had five winners just in the blink of an eye. It was it was wonderful. Um, she's, she's just loving Australia. Um, her, her, her character seems to have just blossomed since she's got to Australia. And then we've got Brittany Wong, who hasn't, uh, hasn't ridden just yet, but I think it's pretty soon she will be. Uh, Felix, just mm. take us back to when you finished your long and very illustrious career as well. What was, did you move straight into the position or was it a time between retirement and starting this role as well? How, what was the timeline for you? Well, Andrew, I, 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 you know, when I stopped, I kind of, I love breaking in horses. Um, I do the groundwork. I have a rider for me because I stopped because I was too, too injured. <laughs> and, um, and, and that was sort of my, my passion. And then the academy in South Africa spoke to me and I went and did a bit of a, like a, a consultation basis for them for a little while. And at the time we, we had uh, two, two, we had Dylan Mo there and another Hong Kong apprentice. So I, I developed a bit of a connection with, with that side of, of Hong Kong at the time. And um, the next thing I, I, got the, this offer so that was that was very very nice and yeah lovely transition for me did you find it um easy in terms of because riding as a jockey you you have to be i don't want to say selfish but you're single-minded in your in your goal but going from a, being a jockey to be a teacher you almost say from um mm -hmm. you know single-minded to selfless now was that was that easy for you to, to make that jump <laughs> Andrew, I've had to learn such a lot. Of course. <laughs> I mean, what a chain. You know, I, my, my big realisation was like, okay, I knew what I knew about riding, but then to actually go and teach it in the correct way. And I've had to learn how to teach and <laughs> oh, so much and, and, and keep on learning every day, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who's, who's learned the most, <laughs> the, the trainees or myself. Well, you clearly enjoy it, um, Felix. So uh, thanks for all the hard work and um, yeah, here's the next 50 years um, as well. And appreciate your time as always. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. Lovely, lovely to chat to you.
All right, straight into the diary then. And this weekend's feature race is the Apprentice Jockey School 50th Anniversary Cup race. Stephen wouldn't put you off Adios. He was huge, for, huge first up. Derek Long rides him. Only Joe Moretz with more winners than Derek in the last 30 days. Happy Valley and then Chartin again next weekend. All right, that's the show. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you this week. Well, the sad news that Lester Piggott sadly died last weekend on his various visits to Hong Kong. Lester had 36 winners from the early 70s to the 1993-94 season, including this one for great friend and legend himself, Ivan Allen. Sterling Town was the horse's name and what is now is the first leg of the four-year-old series. No one other than Tony Cruz rode the fourth place getter here in a blanket finish, our pal. So enjoy this. So we'll see you again on Sunday. We'll all the action from Hong Kong, direct to you. They go past the 300. McBrave a length in front of Thunderbolt, getting up on the inside with winning chance coming quickly at our pal. And then Fortune rides Sterling Town getting home. Our pal got to the front from winning chance and Sterling Town flashing on the outside with Fortune ride. Our pal led winning chance coming at it and Sterling Town may have got up.